Electric guitar design is a type of industrial design where the looks and efficiency of the shape as well as the acoustical aspects of the guitar are important factors. In the past many guitars have been designed with all kinds of odd shapes as well as very practical and convenient solutions to improve the usability of the object. History George Beauchamp is occasionally credited with inventing the electric guitar by designing a lap steel guitar with a pickup, though a lap steel does not have functional frets or a standard guitar type neck. The earliest, electrified, Fretted guitars were hollow-bodied archtop acoustic guitars to which some form of electromagnetic transducer had been attached. The first commercial electrified guitar was the electro-Spanish Ken Roberts model produced from 1931 to 1936 by Rickenbacker, with one Beauchamp-designed pickup and an early Vibrola. Hand vibrato created by Doc Kaufman. Topic: <inaudible> Early Years. Audiovox built and may have offered an electric solid body as early as 1932. Audiovox electric guitars were built by Paul Tutmark, who is also credited as the co-inventor of the magnetic pickup along with Art Stimson, and the fretted electric bass guitar. Bob Wisner worked for Tutmark, converting tube radio amplifiers into guitar amplifiers and eventually developing his own amplifier circuits so Paul's instruments could be sold along with their own amplifiers. Paul was unsuccessful at obtaining a patent for his magnetic pickup as it was too similar to the telephone microphone coil sensor device. Audiovox production was handed over to Paul's son, Bud Tutmark, who continued building these instruments under the Bud Electro brand until the early 1950s. Bud Tutmark had been delegated by the senior Tutmark the task of winding the pickup coils used on his father's and he continued producing them for his own guitars. He used horseshoe magnets in a single coil and later a hum-canceling dual-coil configuration. Bob Wisner was hired by Rickenbacker, later spelled Rickenbacker and may have passed along Tutmark's magnetic pickup technology, resulting in the design still widely used today bar magnet and pole piece construction for their cast aluminum electric guitar, nicknamed the frying pan or the pancake guitar, beginning in 1933. Another early solid-body electric guitar was designed and built by musician and inventor Les Paul in the early 1940s, working after hours in the Epiphone Guitar Factory. His log guitar so called because it consisted of a simple 4x4 wood post with a neck attached to it and homemade pickups and hardware, with two detachable Swedish hollow body halves attached to the sides for appearance only was patented and is often considered to be the first of its kind, although it shares nothing in design or hardware with the solid body. Les Paul model sold by Gibson. <inaudible> Fender In 1950 and 1951, electronics and instrument amplifier maker Leo Fender through his company, designed the first commercially successful solid-body electric guitar with a single magnetic pickup, which was initially named the Esquire. The two-pickup version of the Esquire was called the Broadcaster. 
The bolt on neck was consistent with Leo Fender's belief that the instrument design should be modular to allow cost effective and consistent manufacture and assembly, as well as simple repair or replacement. The broadcaster name was changed to Telecaster because of a legal dispute over the name. In 1954, Fender introduced the Fender Stratocaster, or Strat. It was positioned as a deluxe model and offered various product improvements and innovations over the Telecaster. These innovations included an ash or alder double cutaway body design for badge assembly with an integrated vibrato mechanism called a synchronized tremolo by Fender, thus beginning a confusion of the terms that still continues, three single coil pickups, and body comfort contours. Leo Fender is also credited with developing the first commercially successful electric bass called the Fender Precision Bass, introduced in 1951. Gibson Gibson, like many guitar manufacturers, had long offered semi-acoustic guitars with pickups, and previously rejected Les Paul and his «log» electric in the 1940s. In apparent response to the Telecaster, Gibson introduced the first Gibson Les Paul solid body guitar in 1952 Les Paul was brought in only towards the end of the design process for details of the design and for marketing endorsement too. Features of the Les Paul include a solid mahogany body with a carved maple top much like a violin and earlier Gibson archtop hollow body electric guitars and contrasting edge binding, two single coil, soap bar, pickups, a 24 and 3 quarters, scale mahogany neck with a more traditional glued in, set. Neck joint, binding on the edges of the fretboard, and a tilt back headstock with three machine heads tuners to a side. The earliest models had a combination bridge and trapeze tailpiece design that was in fact designed by Les Paul himself, but was largely disliked and discontinued after the first year. Gibson then developed the Tune O Modich bridge and separate stop tailpiece, an adjustable non vibrato design that has endured. By 1957, Gibson had made the final major change to the Les Paul as we know it today the humbucking pickup, or humbucker. The humbucker, invented by Seth Lover, was a dual-coil pickup which featured two windings connected out of phase and reverse wound, in order to cancel the 60-cycle hum associated with single-coil pickups, as a byproduct, however, it also produces a distinctive, more mellow tone which appeals to many guitarists. The more traditionally designed and styled Gibson solid body instruments were a contrast to Leo Fender's modular designs, with the most notable differentiator being the method of neck attachment and the scale of the neck Gibson 24.75. Fender 25.5 Vox In 1962 Vox introduced the pentagonal phantom guitar, originally made in England but soon after made by Echo of Italy. It was followed a year later by the teardrop-shaped Mark VI, the prototype of which was used by Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones. Vox guitars also experimented with onboard effects and electronics. The teardrop won a prize for its design. 
In the mid-1960s, as the sound of electric 12-string guitar became popular, Vox introduced the Phantom 12 and Mark 12 electric 12-string guitars. Vox produced many more traditional 6- and 12-string electric guitars in both England and Italy. It may be noted that the Phantom guitar shape was quite similar to that of first fretted electric bass guitar, the Audiovox electric bass fiddle of 1934. In 1966, Vox introduced the revolutionary but problematic guitar organ, a Phantom V guitar with internal organ electronics. The instrument's trigger mechanism required a specially wired plectrum that completed circuit connections to each fret, resulting in a very wide and unwieldy neck. John Lennon was given one in a bid to secure an endorsement, though this never panned out. According to Uptight, the Velvet Underground story, Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones also tried one, when asked by the Velvets if it «worked». His answer was negative. The instrument never became popular, but it was a precursor to the modern guitar synthesizer. Multiscale, fanned fret guitars In recent years, guitars and basses with multi-scale or fanned fret fingerboards started to appear. These instruments are supposed to offer an advantage over the classical fixed-scale guitars and basses by providing more freedom in setting the tension of each string at the design and manufacturing phases. This may result in a more uniform tension of the strings, as well as possibly offer timbre and tonal characteristics somewhat different from the usual fixed-scale instruments. Topic. Variant designs Materials other than wood have been used. Travis Bean and Kramer built guitars with aluminium necks. The Gittler guitar was a skeleton design from the late 1970s, largely stainless steel. In 1979, for the Chicago NAM trade show, Ibanez built a 76-pound solid brass guitar, primarily as an attention-getting gimmick but also to demonstrate that while such extreme mass would provide very long note sustain a characteristic sought by many guitarists, the tonal qualities suffered. Various plastics and composites have been employed. Some hollow body Dan Electro had masonite body shells. The Ampeg guitars designed by Dan Armstrong pioneered acrylic as a body material. Fiberglass was used by Volco called Res O Glass for some models of hollow body airline guitars sold through Montgomery Ward. Carbon fiber has been used for necks as well as bodies. 1991 saw the introduction of guitar designer Joel Danzig's first truly workable acoustic electric hybrid guitar design. The instrument, called the Duotone, was conceived while Danzig was at Hamer Guitars. Danzig was also the designer of the first 12 string bass, adapted by players like Ty Tabor, Stone Gossard, Elvis Costello, and Jeff Tweedy. The Duotone was a full duplex instrument that could switch between acoustic and electric tones. Recently there have been many entries in the hybrid category capable of both acoustic and electric tones including the T5 by Taylor, Michael Kelly's hybrid, the Parker Fly and the Anderson Crowdster. In the 90s the band Neptune began building a weird metal guitar with third bridge options incorporated. 
A predecessor of this type of guitars is the Pensilina. Linda Manzer designed the Picasso guitar with multiple necks. <laughs> See also <laughs>